I am planning a zigzag parting up the back, two braids, and then two ponytails. In the front, there'll be that piece that hangs on her forehead, and the pointy piece on the crown, the tree topper, and then curls. She has a set in her from her last updo. I'm going to section off for the braids in the back. Now the zigzag. Just go against the scalp, and the wider you go, the wider the zigzag, and the more narrow you go, the less wide it is. Clipping off a little veiled section on the bottom and then pulling out a piece for a tiny ponytail that I'm going to attach the ribbon to. So that will cover where the ribbon is attached. I want to do a, a more of a boho, softer look on her. And I'm just going to start with my first slice to get the um, Dutch braid going. And that is a braid that goes under. And I'm going to start picking up. I've got my ribbon, got my end. Going to start picking up from the scalp, picking up, got my ribbon. Picking up from the zigzag here. There's one little piece of the zigzag here that I'm going to grab and add. That's the fun part. So you have your components you have your basic drawing, you have your theme, and I have my shape. But how it is exactly going to be is, is not 100%. Take my veil. Make my little ponytail. And as you work through your creation, you're, you're going to come up with solutions. And that's the most important thing you can do is working through your creation and coming up with solutions. Because when your brain figures out a why and then fixes it, then that never goes away. But if you watch a video and copy someone, your brain didn't figure it out. So it's not going to remember it. And that's why you can't remember some of your hairstyles that you watch online over and over again. And this is why when I teach, I really want to teach you how to do updos and the why behind them. So there's the elastic in that little ponytail. I'm looking at the distance between my braids so that when they run up the back of the head, they're even.
and when you do your pulling you need you need uh, room you need room to be able to pull because when you pull down here it comes from here so eventually when I do start to do my pulling these elastics might need to be loosened up a little bit but we will see and I'm not quite ready yet to cut off the ends of the silver because it might get fed through in other areas. So the awkward part is done. There's my two braids with my ribbon detail. And I'm going to just continue to section. If I start to pancake now and design, um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So one of my main features is that this piece is going to land there. So that means at this height level, I need to be able to stick this in somewhere, right? And this is why you create your components and you kind of create your, your look and then you can decide how and what needs to happen here. So I have to pile up a little bit of hair here, maybe with a braid, um, maybe with a, a piece of a donut or something but this is the process of creating and it takes a little bit of time and thought process I'm gonna leave out a little veil mannequin heads have a lot of hair around the edges it's it's pretty dense around the edges it gets thin on on the inside so I kind of like that And so now what I need to create is some height in here so that my piece is going to have a place to, to sit and rest. If you ever want to get into like having your work photographed or like doing ad campaigns, like I had style that was on like the box of a product and styles in magazines. And, um, and so you want your work to be clean and orderly, even if you're doing a loose look. So that's nice and tight. Now I'm just going to do a regular braid. Start by making a crisscross in here. And, and these are not like things you need to copy, but like if you get an aha moment, oh, that makes sense. So I'm crisscrossing right along the scalp and these metal bars are going to help stabilize the ponytail so that it doesn't wobble. Okay, and now I can keep adding more height. Maybe even I can feed it through. Whatever feels good and feels like I'm going to create a really nice tight top knot right here. That's basically what I'm going for right now is, is an internal structure that's going to be strong. Yeah, and I'm not going to put her together just yet. I want to get most of my components organized. If you are working with a real person, I think it's really important that you don't let hair fall down in front of their face. You want the comfort of your model because somebody might think she wants to be a hair model and then she doesn't realize how long it actually takes and they get super antsy. So anything that you can do to keep them comfortable. So I'm just bringing over some more of my components and some more of my ribbon. And even as I'm thinking here 
about this little braided piece that's going to hold the front would also benefit and be useful for holding this from the back. So now I have two components that are going to go in this one little knot. I didn't plan it, but it works out and I'm good to go. I'm always holding tight so I'm not ripping hair out of my mannequin head. Now because I'm going to have such a boho look back here and a soft look on top, I want to have the sides tight. That will make a nice contrast. Just remember you can use water and not get hairspray on your mannequin head all the time. Water sometimes is a good choice. It'll just help save the mannequin hair. Because I want this ponytail and the design to be high, I have length here and then it's short here. When uh, doing videos, you're not in the body position you that's optimal and you're not in the body position that you would do for a real client. So while I take time to pancake the back, my two ponytails will keep their shape and I'll show you a great trick with those later. So let's pull this a little bit looser so I can do some pancake pulling and it really doesn't matter where you start everything is going to come from up here and let's try pancaking the silver that's looking cool One a little bit more down lower. And you can see we're getting a lot of movement and how pretty that is. And I just want to keep on going. Now I'm going to pin this in this area. Then I'll know what I have to work with up here. I can put this elastic right up close to that elastic. So I'm going to just flatten it out right here. I think it'll really be pretty if I bring that up over. I have two pieces of the ribbon right into this corner. So I can go down Grab some of that underneath wherever you pinch, you pin. And so we have some really pretty movement right there. Very soft. 
I think for this one, I'm going to pin right to there. And maybe after I, no, I think what I'll do is, is just wrap it right around the base of this ponytail. Such a pretty look on the side here because we have the tight and then we have the boho braid kind of covering the base of this ponytail. So guys, this is like intuitive art and, and your brain is going to see things and enjoy it. It's going to enjoy what you're, what you're creating and what you're seeing. If you're trying to copy and get something right, or it feels somehow wrong, that that's when frustration comes in, in our field. So this one just kind of ended up behind the pony. This one wrapped around the pony. Here's the ends of my pieces. I might do something with them later. So for now, I'm just going to let them hang down. We're going to work with hair nuts. And like I said, <laughs> I'm a sucker for clearance. So these are clear, uh, neutral for gray or white hair. And we're going to wrap them up. I learned this from one of our group members who's a, a, a Russian stylist. And I'm going to show you how amazing these working with these hair nets can be. And we're going to create amazing movement. So there's a little elastic and we're going to literally just catch the hair. I'm gonna bring that elastic all the way up. See, I just caught some of my boho and I don't wanna catch my boho. Here's a little bit of elastic. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to the ponytail. And guys, if you wanna do this kind of work, <laughs> it can really be frustrating. So it's so important that you keep your um, emotions calm. So here's two little knots. My whole hair piece is in this package. I'm going to wrap my tail around the base of the elastic and pin the hair net in there. Again, you don't have to use the black pins. I just want you to be able to see them. Okay, so now the package is secure. And this is where, because it's secure, you can now do so many amazing things with a piece that's in a hairnet. I'm going to pin right behind the little knot that we have going on. So I talk about where is the hair kissing the head. So it is going to kiss the head right there. So I'm going to go right in where my finger is and secure that down. Okay. And here is what else is happening in the hairnet. If you wanted to fatten this up, you could put a ball in there. You could put hair extensions in there. You could, um, you know, you know, put the styrofoam in there. And so I'm liking that right there. So we got one whole ponytail in a hairnet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of components now because I want to make sure that whatever happens with this last ponytail will balance everything out. So let's put in some pieces. 
I want to put enough cheese in this root so when I bring it back it doesn't split. I'm just cleaning the edge. You, you have to use a bristle brush or your teeth will go all the way through and pull out your teeth. You can't have a, a, a brush that has long hard teeth on it. It has to be bristle. And I like to let the hair talk to me. And it's falling down and coming down right around that braided base that we made. And I can get away with hairpins here. This is lightweight. It's going right into the braid. When you work on each section, you can get each section clean. So now I'm going to put in two of my components. Now, if you were doing this for film, it would have to last through shooting, you know? But if you're doing it just for a photo, it doesn't have to be so super secure. And now, this one last piece, I'm gonna split in two. You could do hair nets again if you wanted to. hairpin. So I just want to check her balance from the front and it looks pretty good. We've got that braid in there. So these are the ends of the braid and I'm going to cut them off. I have one last piece of hair to finish this and fill it out and then I can add in some other components. Now this was put into a hairnet and you saw that this was just done with some teasing and it kind of can create the same effect. It depends on how soft your hair is and how well it's behaving for you. Just smoothing the top layer. And don't worry, those waves will come right back. Switching to a hairspray that has a little bit more moisture. See, it almost behaves just like a hairnet. This is the tail 
from this ponytail that's in the hairnet. You can't see the hairnet, it's invisible. That's why it's standing up on its own. And then I'm just gonna add this one right near it. I'm going to add finishing touches with the rest of my components. As I look at her overall shape and balance, Remember we did these with a little bit of length. That gives you a lot of movement. 